Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we want to review the difference between reversible and irreversible processes when it comes to processes with gases. Now, these are just theoretical models. In the real world, of course, there's no such thing as a perfectly, uh, what we call, irreversible process, but stay with me. So, let's compare. A reversible process is like compressing a spring. Assuming that the spring doesn't heat up by compressing it, when you let go, you get all the energy you put into the spring back. And so that's why it's called a reversible process, when we're able to get all the energy back that we put into it when we did work on it. So what are the analogies with gas processes? Well, first of all, we have the adiabatic process. Because in an adiabatic process, no heat is exchanged. And so if there's no heat exchange to the outside environment, then of course we can have an increase in entropy. So throughout the process, the entropy is not increased, and so we put, could potentially then get all that work back if we have a reversible adiabatic process. And again, without any exchange of heat, we can get back to the original state, just like when we compress a spring and it bounces back. So therefore, we call an adiabatic process theoretically a reversible process. An isothermic process could also be reversible with the condition that the temperature of the gas remains the same as the temperature of the environment because there is a heat exchange. Matter of fact, when you have, a, a when you have an isothermic process, the amount of work done, where does the energy come from? That comes from the external source. It doesn't come from the internal energy of the gas, otherwise the temperature would not remain constant. So it has to be pumped in from the outside world. And whenever there is a heat exchange, typically entropy goes up, unless the temperature of where you take the heat from and where the heat is going to stays the same. And therefore, in the condition where the temperature of the gas remains the same as the temperature of the surroundings, then we have a reversible process when we're talking about an isothermic process. But that's not the case for the Is, uh, for the isobaric process and for the isovolumetric process. Why not? In both cases, heat is being exchanged. And so the heat exchange for an isobaric process is N times C sub P times delta T. And for an isovolumetric process is N C sub V delta T. So we see that the temperature of the gas changes. And because of that, it would be very difficult to keep the temperature of the gas the same as the temperature of its surroundings. That would be extremely difficult to do. And therefore, as the heat is beginning to be exchanged, since the temperature is different, you're going to have an increase in entropy. And the same for the isovolumetric process. So you can see that these are what we would call irreversible process because you can get the all of the energy back that you did to do the, that uh, you got out that you pumped into the process so here you put in uh, work to uh, increase the pressure so actually you keep the volume the same but you increase the pressure which means you have to pump in heat and then the temperature of the gas will change in that process and so therefore as you're pumping in heat you're going to have a, an irreversible process and here in this case even though you keep the pressure the same Uh, you need to pump in heat in order to expand the gas to a larger volume. And again, the temperature of the gas will increase, and so it's not reversible. So that gives you a pretty good feel for the concept of reversible process versus irreversible processes when it comes to the processes of a gas. And that is how it's done.